I'll toss it over here to Maxi Lopes for starting off with Devil May Cry. Everybody give him a huge round of applause. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone, thank you. Um, hello, everyone at home, everyone in the crowd, thank you for all the applause. Thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> pleasure to be back. Um, Many of you probably know me from prior events and for, for couching for many fun runs, but uh, I'm back with Devil May Cry. I ran it at AGDQ 2017. The run has changed a little bit, and you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. But I'm um, super happy to be here. I'm going to be showing you Devil May Cry, any percent normal, just kind of the regular category. You start the game. There is no difficulty option when you first start up the game, so that's just how it works. Um, it's the most popular category. And over here, I got my wonderful uh, couch. We got Waifu. Howdy. Awesome Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 2 Remake Runner. Also runs DMC1 and DMC3. Ooh. Yeah. And then we got Mr. Bakba Soup. Never ran this game in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But I do love the game, so. Awesome speedrunner as well of many games. You're probably familiar with him as well. And he'll be running Resident Evil 2 Remake later this week, mm -hmm. Tuesday night. That's oh, right. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I suppose let's get this started, shall we? You want me to count down? I'll count it down. All right. Oh, Dante, Dante is really excited. Hold on. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> let's devil may go. cry. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. So, Devil May Cry, 2001 PlayStation 2 game. Uh, really set the bar higher for hack and slash games for sure. Uh, Hideki Kamiya, director of the game, went on to direct a ton of awesome games such as Beautiful Joe, Okami, Bayonetta. Awesome dude. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this is definitely a classic. Uh, the game is kind of just sectioned up into missions, so you'll see me do a lot of mission select screens. But uh, I guess the first thing to show you guys is this cool hidden stash of red orbs on top of that uh, statue. And red orbs are vital to the speedrun. We will be buying abilities and items and opening up uh, doors with them. And much like the Resident Evil series, there are a lot of key items that you pick up in this game. And as you can see, you know, we're in this kind of spooky castle with this ominous music. Uh, and that's because, for those of you who may not know, the early production of this game, um, it was actually supposed to be a Resident Evil 4. Yeah. And they kind of they kind of didn't want to scrap the idea that they had for this game, so they just kind of changed into something different. Which yeah. Was amazing. A lot of segments of this game are very similar to parts of RE4 as well. Yep. Even the music that's playing right now is very similar to some songs in RE4. And the first trick of the runner right here is uh, slash canceling, or quick slashes. Uh, you do two slashes and then you hold, or not hold, but you quickly press the right bumper and B. Whoa! <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> this Whew. run is a little too hype already. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so uh, that's never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh. <laughs> So, Only at HDQ. Yeah, right? So the slash canceling, like I said, two slashes, hit your right bumper and your B button, and that's how you get the uh, most amount of damage in the mm, smallest amount of time. And what I was doing to fire Dante's gun so quickly, I was actually holding the space bar and using the, the J key, which is the default shoot button. And uh, I wasn't mashing it, I was actually very rhythmically tapping it in order to get Dante's fastest 
uh, shooting speed with Ebony and Ivory, which are the handguns that he uses. And there's mission one, and the S there's rank. the S rank. Let's go. And those are pretty vital to the speed run early on, eh? Yes. Very vital to the speed run. Those S ranks are going to get me uh, a lot of the orbs that I need for the beginning. And we're going to be picking up Alistair. I am Alistair. And those S ranks are going to have different requirements on different levels. For example, in this level, he has to take no damage the entire level to get the S rank. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so early on in this game can be very, very difficult. It may look easy because it's a hack and slash game, but it, believe me, it's a difficult game after watching the speedrun so many times. It's pretty brutal. Platforming in DMC. <laughs> Extremely Fountain. <awkward. laughs> Fountain. Thank you. Just some backup orbs there, just in case. So right there, I was actually listening it out for uh, for that guy to throw his little throwing knife. Because if I take damage, I forfeit the S rank, and I need that. So just gotta really listen out for that. So you can do a sneaky little jump. And uh, now we're running into Sin Scissors, the puppet enemies that you guys know. Uh, those are called marionettes, and this is the second enemy you're introduced to, the Sin Scissors. Very nice. Oh, man. Nice. Nice. That was actually really good. <laughs> yeah. So first hurdle we've gotten over. We need the two S ranks at the very start of the game in order to buy our first ability. Oh, yeah. And that first ability is Stinger. Stinger level oh, two. Oh, here we go. I think you guys remember this. Here we go. Dante's going to do a lot of talking from now on. Or not talking, but you'll hear it. There we oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh. Fantastic job, everyone. All right, so, oh, there we go. Just going to take out these skulls with the stinger. And much like mission two, I cannot take damage on mission three, otherwise I will forfeit something called a special bonus, uh, which is going to give us a lot of extra red orbs. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna fight our first boss, Phantom, or as I like to call him, Lava Scooter. And here he is. Got him. Oof. Very nice. I have no clue if that was good or not, but it looked good. <laughs> it was good enough. <laughs> and there's oh, the yeah. bonus. Okay, this is good. Very nice start. And now we're buying our first item, holy water. And uh, holy water, for only 700 red orbs, it's a very powerful item in this game. I'm going to be using it a ton. Oh, he's not dead! Uh-oh. Bye. <laughs> and here's Demon Kitty.
Demon Kitty. Bad Kitty. Bad, bad Kitty. Oh, man. No, Bad Kitty. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. Dude, come on. He's just not playing ball. This would be his <laughs> health hey, is RNG. Um, he got really bad RNG. The jam and tunes in this game, holy crap. Yeah, that's that's a really good song. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really good one. And that cat was using a, one of the abilities from Devil May Cry 5 that you use with, uh, what's his name? It's actually the same Bean. enemy. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same guy. It's the oh, same okay. cat. Which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that shadow is what it's actually called. I call it a demon kitty. Um, it's actually completely random whether or not its core comes out sooner rather than later. It's just, it's like, it's almost like random health. Oh yeah, and here's Nello Angelo. Here it comes, the holy and water. And <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> E for broken holy water. Yep. And here comes the next mission where I need a special bonus as well by not taking any damage. And look who's back, Demon Kitty. Oh, nice. Thank oh, heavens. thank you, Demon Kitty. Very nice shadow. Thank you, Demon Kitty. Very nice. Max, I just want to say uh, congratulations to everybody for reaching the Devil May Cry legendary cutscene. Oh. Oh. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I, I can't wait for that. Oh, man. Now that is exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby boy. All right. So we need all of those orbs because this mission right here, we buy two Holy Waters, Air Hike, and Air Raid. And all of those 6K orbs we just got, spend them all. Right then and there. Lots of Dawes and lots of Beals of Bugs. Thank you, Holy Water. Yeah, so those S ranks are super important because you need those holy waters to get certain cycles on bosses as well as clear out whole rooms like that. And also, you use it to buy upgrades, especially for your devil trigger. So it opens up a whole lot more movement options, like how here he's running faster with using his devil trigger. And we manage that a lot throughout the run. Making quick work of that mini boss with that holy water. And uh, if we got time for donations, now would be perfect, actually. Oh, we got plenty. We got we got donations. Let's oh go. yeah, we Let's got go, plenty. AJ. So we got a uh, hundred dollar donation here from Ronza. Doesn't say anything. Just, that's it. So thank you so much for that generous donation. We have a $250 donation from Decap12. Says, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, y'all. Oh, yeah, give, give him that applause. Give him a big old applause. Woo! That's a lot of money. They say, Hey there, SGDQ. I've been watching several years and I've always enjoyed the passion shown at these games. You guys are doing an amazing work. Keep it up. Hype for the rest of the runs this week. We have another $100 donation from Anonymous. No comment. So thank you so much for that donation. And we have another $100 donation from Kedeptry. It says, busy week ahead, so today will be the only chance I get to donate. My kids love watching these runs, and it's great the way they get to see humanity at its best while having a good time. Good luck to all the runners. Nice. Very nice, Thank you. Thank you so much. 
And a uh, $30 donation from Mooniversal here said, let's see that Devil May Cry legendary cutscene. And you're definitely going to see that cutscene now, so thank you so much. Oh, yeah. We're also going to see the last legendary fight against Phantom right here. Hello. Welcome back. And now you can see I have air hikes, so I'm allowed to just double jump wherever I want. I don't have to use walls, which makes it a lot easier to do this fight in this open area. Good fight. Nice. Nice. And we're also going to be picking up uh, one of the guns that we'll be using in this run. Pretty much for the entirety of the rest of the run, like, we'll, we'll be using grenade gun, or grenade launcher. It's called grenade gun in the game, but, you know, it's, it's very powerful, and that's why we're going to be using it for the rest of the run. It's just, it's just so powerful, especially when you activate double trigger and use it. And we should be getting an S rank right here. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, there it is. Very nice. So at what point does it stop being so important to get an S rank? Um, actually, in a few missions, it'll start being, uh, I'll, you know, if you get like an A rank, it's all right. It doesn't hold you back too much. And that, that's what makes this game so scary for a marathon. Like, not getting an S rank early on is just makes the run really hard. Yeah, a lot of the scary parts in the beginning of this run are over, so. Especially since you got that S rank on mission seven. Yeah, yeah, right. It's an optional S rank in the current route. So getting it helps a lot. Here's uh, the lizard men. They're called Blades, but I call them Lizard Man because they remind me of Lizard Man from Soul Calibur. The best character. Yeah, of course. And right here, we're doing a couple of precise jumps to get these gauntlets without having to do the platforming puzzle. So that's a neat little trick. Hi, Griffin. Bye, Griffin. <laughs> yeah, optional boss fight. I it's so funny. Last time last time I ran this, one of the YouTube comments on the on the video was you have you don't have to fight Griffin there. <laughs> I was I was so happy to read that. So as you can see, grenade launcher is just decimating these enemies. Flip in with a uh, ten dollar donation here from the Rogue Tenant. It says if Dante was a fry cook, this game would be called Devil May Fry. Oh, oh good oh luck on the runs, Maxi. <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> that was good. I like that. Buffalo Prime came in with a twenty-five dollar donation. Says this run is really running at maximum capacity. Oh, Love you, Mr. Lobe. Oh, nice. Another good one. Thank you, BT. Thank you. Another S rank. There nice. we go. So right there, I bought Meteor Level One, which is the first ability that you buy as uh, with the Ifrit gauntlets. It's the only ability we buy with this current route, right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that Orb Cash was there. Learn new things every time. Wait, really? No. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't know either. <laughs> yeah, and that's just to help out with the ranking if if something goes wrong. The uh, secret stash. So what exactly are you using here? That is air raid. That was uh, that was purchased right before mission six. 
that's one of those uh, Devil Trooper exclusive you, uh, movement options that you can get. And it's really important for sections like that. Because those enemies are really annoying and they can just fly through the wall and not let you hit them. So being able to bait them out like that makes it way easier. Cool, cool. That was that was smooth. Smooth mission. Buy one more of those. We should be good. So, if you have a surplus of uh, orbs, do you buy extra holy water or? No. Um. It's actually, it, well, I mean, it's optional. You can buy some extra holy waters, but if you do early on, before you get to the end game, you might not have enough orbs to buy enough devil stars. And those devil stars that you buy are to refill your devil trigger, and you need that for one of the bosses at the end. Ah, uh, okay. So... If you're super confident and you know that your orb count is going to be unaffected, you could buy some extras before end game. So Nello Angelo is back, <laughs> and we're just going to bully him again with more holy water. <laughs> Poor guy. Nice. So, a little bit of a difference between this run and the HDQ 2017 one was that uh, we started incorporating more holy water into the run. Now, even though we're incorporating more holy water, which is a pretty OP item, the run is, itself is actually still quite difficult. Um, there are still quite a lot of tricks that I'm making look a little easier than they really are. And one of those tricks is actually coming up pretty soon. Oh, hello. I love water. <laughs> First person water. Levels. I just love swimming. Oh, so at the first of the mission, they were introducing the water mechanic? Yeah. I, I see. I was like, what are these controls on the screen? They uh, spoil the underwater fighting mechanic before you even get the weapon. Yeah. It's more like a warning than a spoiler. <laughs> So that right there, some specific timing, uh, helm breaking as soon as he glides towards you. And then you're going to position yourself, activate DT, shoot a grenade launch, use meteor level one at full charge, use the holy water close enough to him, and Griffin's dead. Frame perfect. <laughs> That is the hardest one cycle in the game, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's very, that's just based on timing. That's all timing. You just got to practice and feel it out. Nice last rank. And uh, now we got some more time for donations. Absolutely. We got a uh, $250 donation from Anonymous. Ooh. 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 And indeed, he says, stuck at work on a Sunday. Thank you for making it a little less painful. Got a $10 donation from Camwin. Says, with the power of physics, I will portal this donation to DuckTales 2 Good Ending. And with that, we've actually met the DuckTales 2 Good Ending incentive. Nice. There we go. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a $50 donation from Hazy Views. Says, been watching since 2012, seen every GDQ since. Can finally donate. Thanks for everything you're all doing for a great cause. Kill the animals. Yeah. Yeah. 
So now that we uh, have quite a bit of orbs, we're at uh, a specific mission where we're going to be needing a faster way of movement. So we're going to buy Vortex Level 2, and we're going to use this quite a bit from now on throughout the rest of the run. Um, you'll see it in action in just a moment. But first, I got to dom my way to this lever. Oh, yeah. The joys of speedrun strats. So this is Vortex. As you can see, pretty darn quick. Fastest movement in the game? Yep. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. And now we have a, uh, a random room. There's three different enemies that can spawn in this room. Let's see if we can get a good one. We got the bad one. But we can still show off the trick because a different enemy may spawn if we re-enter the room, not just like that. So we're going to stinger jump all the way down the canyon, avoid it all completely. So the first enemy that spawned was a Death Scythe, and the reason why we can't do that stinger jump is because the Death Scythe has strange movement. Uh, Dante will auto-lock onto him, and it's uh, not the right angle. Not the right angle to get a stinger jump at all. So I'm gonna fill my uh, fill my devil trigger with um, the grenade launcher there. Nice S rank. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, we're good to go on holy waters. So now we're gonna use vortex across the Colosseum grounds to get to this next door. these hidden orbs and that holy water. Fill up the devil trigger real quick. And now we're going to go through this room with Vortex as well. Oh, I got stuck. So this room is a little uh, wacky. As you can see, I kind of got caught up on that wall, so I can't use devil trigger. Oh. 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 This room can be kind of <laughs> scary. because of that. Can't use devil trigger to get all the way to the key item, but that's okay. Okay, that's nice not recovery. too bad. That's a good recovery, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dante. <laughs> Never mind. Smelt, you know, he felt like giving the spikes a little smooch. All right, cool, cool. Not too bad. Oh, and something I haven't explained yet, um, which is, like, very visibly noticeable. When I, act, when I actually get to a door and want to use an item, the way that I skip through text is I use the two fingers to mash A and B. And that's how you mash through text so quickly. And now we're going to fight Mr. Griffin for the final time. So we're going to use the holy water. And now we can't keep using holy water. We actually need to use the grenade launcher to get him onto the ground because this fight has two different phases. There we go, got him. And now we can use more holy water. Boom. GG. Easy clap. Easy. And that mysterious woman that was uh, standing next to Dante is Trish. She's the reason why Dante's uh, here, ruining his Monday. Nice S rank. Smooth. That's a hard mission to S rank because of that scary room. Yeah. We got it, though. All right, we got some more time for don donations right now. Absolutely. We got a uh, $10 donation from Mana Senshi. Says, just got home from work in time to catch this run. Shout out to Maverick SR, who is currently sitting in the back of the couch. We love you, hon. Thank you, thank you. Got a $250 donation. Ooh. 
Booyah. Oh, yeah. From The Benefactor says, Good tidings, SGDQ. Glad we were already off to a fantastic start of this event. I'm looking forward to many runs this week, but the upcoming Pink Pollo Puff shall be fantabulous. Oh, Let's yeah. make him a blue puff during the riding on air. Signed, The Benefactor. Thank you, Benefactor. So we're going to do a little stinger jump off of this uh, knight statue. And we're going to meet a new enemy, which is a, basically just an electric version of Dante. And we're going to juggle him. Nice juggle. Wonderful juggle. 144 damage combo. Juggling those reused assets. Gonna shoot that guy to get full double trigger. And then we're going to make our way down this hallway with Vortex. And we actually got some good luck here. Um, the marionettes can either spawn at the bottom of the hallway like they just did, or the, the, the very beginning where you enter. So it's good that we got the other spawn so that we can use Vortex to get through the hallway. And now, Nightmare. So right here, that is the one cycle nightmare fight. Nice. There it is. What a strange, strange boss design. Right? <laughs> so uh, I actually found that strat, which is surprising because I usually don't find strats for games. Um, but you use five fully charged Ifrit punches and then a single sixth one, just not charged at all, and then use Holy Water. And if your timing is right, you'll be able to use the Holy Water before he uh, hides his core, which is his weak point. So, again, another timing-based strategy there. And that actually helps across multiple boss fights because he's one of the bosses that you fight multiple times, and he has actually has a secret mechanic that isn't really advertised anywhere, and most people don't know about it. The more times you hit his core, the more damage that specific core takes. And it's actually per hit and not per damage. So if you hit it with a bunch of light attacks quickly, it'll break cores faster and have more damage resistance over time, and that carries across all three boss fights. Oh, interesting. Thank you for that explanation. That was spot on. Uh, and now this uh, next couple of rooms, there's not a whole lot going on, so donation time? Absolutely. We got a $25 donation from Grunt121. It says, hey, Doctors Without Borders, enjoy your future. It's going to be great. Shout out to the lads in Discord who I'll give gift subs to if it gets read out. <laughs> I'm going to apologize in advance for this, but uh, Ryko063 says, if Dante were a baker... Would the game be Devil Make Rye? Thank you so much for the $20 oh, donation. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, get it, Maxi. <laughs> I'll spin it. God. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh. Got another $25 donation from Shwika. Says, love GDQ and all they do to help those in need. Glad I'm not realizing halfway through the week that it's that time of year again. Best of luck to the runner. Orb? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't do it. I mean, uh, I mean, the currency in this game is orbs, so. Oh, we're going to say it again because we got a $250 donation. Oh, no. Nice. From Kubi, watching one of my favorite speedrunners live at my first GDQ. Orbs, yes. Yes. And, uh... <laughs> and all those orbs are going to help me bully Nello Angelo again by just hitting him with a bunch of holy waters. Final fight against Nello. Bullied. It's over. GG. <laughs> I love how broken holy waters is in this game. <laughs> right? Blatantly broken. Yep. Uh, who cares? 
That's why they made them like a thousand red orbs in DMC3, something mm. like that. And they totally removed items in five. So. Which, by the way, five's five's pretty darn good. Oh, it's a fantastic. For all you Devil May Cry fans who have not yet played five, highly suggested. It. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So we just got the the Sparta, the sword of legendary Dark Knight Sparta, but we're not going to use it at all. It's <laughs> worthless to us. That's Sorry, terrible. Dad. Just how it, this is how it goes. I know you saved the entire world from the underworld two millenniums ago, but... Times have changed, old man. And more water! Where are these harpoons coming from? <laughs> like, his, his mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was sleeping during you picking that up, but... No, there, there's, a, there's a needle gun that I picked up um, right before we fought Griffin for the first time on the ghost ship. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I just didn't mention it. You, you only ever use it underwater. You can't use it outside of water, so... It's your only way of fighting things. Can I slip in with a donation real quick? Yes, go ahead. We're just going to do the same boss fight against Nightmare again. One cycle. Goody goodness. Go for it. Awesome. We got a $50 donation from Gert56. This is my first GDQ, and wow, actually being here is incredible. Thanks to everyone for all their hard work for this event. Also, hi, Maxi. Good luck with the run. Thank you. Hello. Got a $5 donation from Rice. My first donation of the week. Just wanted to point out that if everyone in chat donated the minimum amount of $5, we'd start the week off with half a million dollars. A small donation could go a long way. Good luck to all the runners. Let's have a great week. He's think, right, you know, he's right. I think we could definitely hit half a million dollars very soon. I think Absolutely. we should definitely do that. We got $10 from Reddick. Says S rank pasta is always cooked El Dante. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just how I like it. And Babylon comes in with five dollars. If this game was about short-lived insects, oh, no. it would be called Devil May Fly. <sighs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Please. Liquid88 comes in with $25, says, Love you, Maxi. Let them know not to mess with the son of Sparta. Hey. Hey, don't mess with the son of Sparta. At this point in the game, anything that's even mildly irritating on a run this good, you just totally water. So basically all the enemies that are in the way at all, just totally water. Yep. So the really hard parts of the game are, for the most part, over, correct? Uh, yeah. For the most part. There's only one really difficult part. Um, but that's just because I'm going to be doing an optional strat that you probably shouldn't do but I'm prepared. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the wrong way to hunt. <laughs> that was the strider. <laughs> so, Anders144 came in with another $250 donation. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
They say donation to Maxi Loeb's choice since I kind of owe him for spring for the Uber at last year's SGDQ. Thanks, man. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, final fight against Nightmare. You know what we're gonna, well, actually, no, you don't know what we're gonna do. This is a little bit different. So we're gonna do four fully charged punches this time. And then we're gonna use a Holy Water because there's two phases separated by a cutscene right here. <laughs> 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 That's when Trish oh. just nails you with demonic lightning. Uh oh. There we go. So we're gonna refill that little sigil back up, change back to Alistair, and then get ready to use the holy water to finish him off. Oh That's my ow. god, <laughs> the, my ears. I love how inconsistent the audio is in this game. Sometimes you can't hear yeah. a damn thing, and other times your ears are bleeding. That's true. Um, let's get some Devil Stars early. But don't get me wrong, this game has a godlike soundtrack. It does. And if you have the HD collection, uh, you can actually listen to a bunch of the soundtrack just on the, the launch screen. And there's a lot of cool uh, concept art as well on that launch screen in the gallery. Uh, and a lot of that concept art is actually uh, enemy designs for what was going to be Resident Evil 4 back in the year 2000. And a lot of those enemy design concepts are actually a lot cooler than what is in Resident Evil 4. Despite RE4 being a great game, I would have wanted to see some of the enemies that they had originally thought of. Oh, totally. The enemy design is just a bunch of different looking humanoids. Yeah. And then regenerators. So Nibelmach came in with $10 and says, uh, if Dante couldn't talk to people, we would be devil may shy. Uh, <laughs> please, no. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, he's dead already. He's dead. Pyrodoc67 came in with a $100 donation. It says, so awesome that you were back at SGDQ running a game that is so much fun to watch. Good luck. And da. All right, so I'm going to attempt a, a neat little trick here that was just found a few days ago. Because so, really doubt it's gonna happen, but I'll try it. Oh, oh. Uh, we got we got a bad angle. That's it, okay. Though. It was close. Yeah. So if you if you let Dante lock on to that enemy, he'll do just a vortex completely upwards, and you'll go to the end of this section. But if you don't get the angle right, Dante will just. Uh, He'll just run into a wall and he won't actually get up here. But this is these are the platforms I was going to get up to if performed correctly. It saves a little bit of time. Not a whole lot, but enough to really do make a difference in like a world record attempt or a PB attempt. And that is the end of Living Cave. Which yes, the underworld is just a living cave. <laughs> it's got it's got organs and everything. It's pretty freaky. Alright. A couple more double stars. Two blue orbs so I can do the, the not so safe strat, but make it a little bit safer. <laughs> oh, please tell me the cutscene is coming soon. Oh, it's coming <laughs> soon, Mr. Super. But first, we gotta fight Mundus. Big bad Mundus. I'm just going to explode this humongous dragon out of my face by constantly using Devil Triggers, which I'm refilling with Devil Stars. Yeah, there's like a random sort of shoot 'em up sky boss fight at the end of the game. Yeah. This is where you definitely see influences going into games like Bayonetta. 
100% correct about that. Absolutely. So this is just the first phase of the fight. This uh, crazy aerial combat. And the second phase is where I'm going to be doing a dangerous strat where I'm not going to be healing. I don't, don't suggest do it, not healing. Don't, don't do this at home, kids. But yeah, we're going to try and kill Mundus with no heals. Mind if I uh, put in some donations here? Oh, hold on. Oh, uh, oh my. That is <laughs> about a pixel of health. I might need Crazy. to heal. Yeah. Might need to heal now. I, I attempted it though. And now the legendary cutscene that you oh. all yes, donated yes. for. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks for this. this is Let's great. enjoy. Father's also here now. Rest in peace. Beautiful. <sighs> Absolutely beautiful. Super classic. Honestly, when I was younger, that cutscene broke me. Uh, I was just supposed to say that too. I've watched that so many times. You just got to feel for Dante, you know? And the music there too. Is oh, awesome. that's like one oh, of the best songs in the game. Absolutely. And the good old Capcom escape right here. Right? All, all of the Capcom games in which you need to escape an exploding island. <laughs> or an exploding mansion. Something is exploding and you need to get out of there. Yep. And you have way too much time to do so. <laughs> nope. So this this whole entire escape sequence just optimal optimal movement. Optimal jumping and platforming. Would this be a good time for some donations? Go ahead. Sorry, we said, got a uh, couple. I got uh, five dollars from three ducks. Says I heard that if everyone donated five dollars, we'd start the week off with half a mil. I want to see that happen. So here's five dollars. If you want to see that happen, donate five dollars. I heard Dante might donate. Then this game would be Devil Pay Five. <laughs> Yes. Ooh, Nelly. <laughs> Another five dollars from Wyatt Kanye says, "If this game was about Dante being sad, it'd be called Devil May Cry." Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> Mundus is back in his spaghetti form. Mm -mm -mm. His uh, his spaghettio face. Nice bolognese. Oh, yeah. It looks like we have a winner. <laughs> Jackpot. Jackpot, baby. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Goodbye, spaghetti o mundus. <laughs> and now we escape in a biplane. Oh, yeah. Fun fact, if you only shoot one time, you'll escape with exactly one HP. <laughs> I love the animation here. Do you even have to move? Uh, if you have enough health, no. <laughs> oh, God. Just bumping up everything. Yeah. Sick, dude. <laughs> All right, here comes time. Time. Nice. 48, 48. Nice. Oh. That was an awesome round. That was a really good round, yeah. With the cutscene? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I heard the sequel list okay. is going to be sick. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> More than enough. Nice. That's not oh. a make cry. There it is. I say please. Pepe, please. Yeah, please. Awesome, run, man. For the love of God, follow this man, Maxi Loves on Twitch. Maxi Loves on Twitch. Maxi <laughs> Loves on Twitch. Full time, uh, full time streamer on Twitch. I speed run a ton of games: Resident Evil games, Silent Hill games, some things that you may never have seen before. Shenmue. Uh, oh yeah. Fear. I ran Fear at SGDQ 2018. If you recognize me and couldn't quite put your finger on it. How many times have you been to GDQ? Uh, I ran Jet Set Radio at SGDQ 2016. Uh, ran Devil May Cry 2017 at GDQ. Fear 20. And I've been here like this is my seventh time. <laughs> yeah. I've been on a bunch of horror block couches. I'm here all the time, and it's an absolute pleasure to work with everyone to raise money for such a great cause. Thank you to everybody at home who uh, who put you know money towards the legendary cutscene as well as just the charity in general, because that cutscene's awesome. Thank you. Thank you to everybody in the crowd for being so supportive and lovely. Thank you very much. Um, and you know, if you're if you're an artist on Twitter and you did some art for this run, please tag me at Maxi Lobes. I want to see all that awesome art. I want to see what you guys did. And uh, if you guys do want to keep in touch with me, that's where to find me. Twitter at Maxi Lobes. Feel free to ask me anything you want. I'll be tweeting it up after this. Um, Heck yeah! Thank you again so much. Thank you to you two wonderful people for helping me out, and thank you to all of the staff as well. Give, give them a round of applause as well. Give them a round of applause. And thank you to my host, AJ. You did a wonderful job as well. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again, Maxi, for that amazing run of Devil May Cry. I'm going to power through some of these uh, donation trains real quick. We, we had a $5 donation from Wolfman2000, said, Evening all, my turn for this. If Dante was instead a sh shopping simulator, this would be Devil May Bry. Bye. Keep by. Well, I can read. Keep on grooving all. With that, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to a uh, Twitch ad. Afterwards, you will be able to watch as uh, Devil or <laughs> Maxi Lobes gets interviewed by Spike Vegeta talking about Devil May Cry.
From eSports to retro consoles, PCs to arcades, World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video game experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. For information booking and upcoming events, visit world9gaming.com and follow us on social media at World 9 Gaming. Tokyo Attack. RIJ 2019 is the largest Japanese arcade event in America, hosted by Tokyo Attack, featuring 24-hour gaming, over 100 import arcade machines, more than 30 tournaments, and over 1,500 pop bonuses. RAJ is an event you aren't going to want to miss. For more info at rajotg.com. MAGWEST. MAGFEST is returning to the West Coast this September 13th through 15th with MAGWEST in San Jose, California. MAGWEST will feature free play arcades, live video game concerts, tournaments, tabletop gaming, community jamming, and much, much more. Super MAGFEST, the flagship event, pulls in 24,000 people for four days of nonstop gaming and video game music concerts. The company website is magwest.org. And we are going to have an interview with Maxi Lobes about his Devil May Cry run. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. It has been an absolutely stacked first day, already well past $100,000 raised for Doctors Without Borders. Been an absolutely incredible event to watch. I have the pleasure of being joined by the ever talented, the multi talented Maxi Lobes. How you doing, my dude? I'm doing great. I feel wonderful. I was about to say, I could tell you were coming over, you're like, ooh, you're a little jacked up about it. <laughs> How'd you feel about the run, man? You know what? Uh, back in 2017, when I ran it at AGDQ, uh, I felt like that run wasn't really showing off my full potential with the game. Now that I came back, I'm, I'm super happy with that run. It, it just went very much so better. There's, it's so much better. Right. But, I mean, the first five missions, as I said, uh, they're very risky for, for runs in general, whether you're doing a marathon run or just at home. So uh, being able to show off those first few missions and nail them and the rest of the run just be so smooth, I'm much happier with that run.
You've obviously, you've run a ton of different speed games. I, I got the pleasure, I sat down and watched this entire run. First time I've seen a Devil May Cry speed run. And coming from the Kingdom Hearts community, it gave me a lot of feelings of that. Just mm -hmm. everything about it, every move you make, every hit on a boss or an enemy, it all looks so satisfying. Oh, yeah. Is there like a one aspect of the run, even just like a single moment that you find the most satisfying to get to execute? The one cycle nightmare. Yeah, I think it's I think it's kind of a combination of the fact that I found the strat and also the fact that it's just so nice to execute. If you get the perfect timing, you know, you just you just the sound of nightmare dying yes. as well. The sound <laughs> yeah. of the holy water hitting his core and just bloop, he just turns into a big goopy mush. Uh huh. That's satisfying. I want to kick it over for a social media question. This locks into a question I had. Uh, we got from uh, Shazio7 here. How awesome was that hard lock recovery? So, when it, so that's actually, like I said in the run, that has never happened in <laughs> any run I've ever done of the game. And I've been running it for a pretty long time. Um, I think when it happened, my initial thought was, oh, okay, I think I'll wait this out. <laughs> and it was loud. It was annoying. But... It only lasted a few seconds, and I was super happy about that. So I just went straight back into the run, and I just thought to myself, wow, this is already really hype. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was like the perfect amount of time for just like, all right, it was funny. It didn't get too annoying. It was yeah, just yeah. this moment that everyone's going to talk about, and then we move on. And there was this, you know, I was sitting out here in the audience like everybody else. Well, I was, I was sitting back here. I get a front row seat. Um, you, ha you took it so well in stride. There wasn't this like, oh no, what are we gonna do? Right. Like just all of a sudden, you just worked with it, and you yeah, yeah. made the run work, and you still got a forty-eight. Like you're saying, something you were very happy with. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Where does just like this comfort come from for you? I think the general experience that I've had with GDQ uh, back. You know what? <laughs> when I ran Jet Set Radio at SGDQ 2016, I blue screened the streaming computer. <laughs> So, <laughs> to be quite fair, that was pretty minimal compared to that. Sure, you know? sure. So, yeah. I, I definitely think that the composure comes from just experience with the event. And I think uh, when I get up on the stage, there's definitely nerves. There are nerves. Like, everyone there has nerves. Be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like once I start talking, once I start looking into the camera, once I start playing on my controller, it kind of all changes. The entertainer within me just comes out and uh -huh. starts showing itself. I think it's just really just the experience. I'm glad you brought that up, the entertainer in you, because I want, I want to key in on that a little bit. And I genuinely, I don't say this to everyone. If I were, because people still come up, oh, it's, I'm, I've got my first marathon run ever coming up, whether I'm performing here or somewhere else. What do I do? What, what should I, sort of things should I be thinking about? I, I could show people this run you just did as like a clinic on how to be a good speedrunner, how to be a good entertainer, how to understand how to be a good commentator of a run. There were so many little things you did well in that run where you knew almost like a point guard. You knew how to alley for your skills to then be the oop yeah, all of yeah, a sudden. Yeah, right. That you, you kind of talked about a strat and then you had the visual on screen of it happening so people were able to follow along. It's a lot to digest anyone obviously for a first runner, but what would be mm -hmm. like your number one or two tips? to someone who's got to do a marathon run? You know, I think when it comes down to practicing for the marathon run, you know, practicing your run is, it's good, but really what you should work on is practicing certain sections of the game where you want to talk about things because like in, in Devil May Cry, there's a lot to talk about in certain sections. So rather than focusing on the game at ho like when you're at home practicing for your run, it's better to not focus on the game as much and to kind of go into your own head and think about what do I want to tell the people? Sure. You know, what do I want to say? What do I want to explain? What do I want to leave out? What do I want to talk about with my, with my couch? And what do I want to do to address the camera and address the people at home and everyone donating? There's a lot to balance. And once you start getting a bit, bit better at that balance, you know, practicing what you should say and what you should be doing, I think you get a lot more comfortable. So it's, for me, when I'm at home, I think a lot about what I'm going to say. I don't say it out loud sometimes when I'm practicing, mm -hmm. but you know, I just I focus a little bit less on the game and I really kind of format what I'm going to talk about. Sure. Almost, uh, it's almost like writing an essay in your mind. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is a weird explanation, but it. It's but true. it's marathon it's, speed running 101. It's, it really is. It's there's coming so from much the heart and the mind. Like I, I've done this four times, not as many as other people, but I can tell you that, like, what I do. What I practice is the right thing to practice. Mm -hmm. You know? I, 
It's always a joy watching you, man. I want to also take one more social media question here from Glass Logan VG. You did talk about practice right there. How long would you say that you actually spend practicing your speed running tactics on a weekly or general basis? Do you find you are mm. grinding strats a lot, or are you grinding out runs more often? I feel like it's very dependent on the game. Um, for Devil May Cry, I've been running for so long, so I generally just kind of do runs as practice. But um, there are some games where the only way I'm going to be able to get better is if I practice one section, like one two-minute section of the run over and over again. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on failing it every time I do a run. So very dependent on the game. I would say, you know, as a full-time streamer, it's kind of hard to find points of practice because you just want to stream and have fun. But as a speedrunner, you want to be professional. There are some times where I find myself offline grinding some strats. I usually save sure. that for offline. So I'd say maybe like just a couple days a week. I want to get one more question for you because awesome run of Devil May Cry, but this is not the last time we're going to get to see you this week. You're going to be there for Horror Block, mm -hmm. I understand, yep. on the couch for both Resident Evil 2 and Silent Hill later on in the week. Uh, Resident Evil 2, my personal favorite game of 2019 that has come out. Absolutely amazing speed game on top of that. What do you expect to see out of Bakba Zoop's performance and just the game itself? You know, Resident Evil 2 Remake, really fantastic speed game, but I must say, it's very a very simplistic speed run, as hard as it is mm. to pull off. So, I think there's actually going to be a lot of fun things to talk about rather than explaining a lot about the run. I think charisma and, and attitude and just lots of jokes and just good fun out of RE2 Remake. You guys are always bring the charisma. Definitely looking forward to all those runs. Once again, thank you, Maxi Loves for showing up. We have had an absolutely amazing first day here at SGDQ 2019, guys. About to kick it back up to the front. <laughs> I understand up on the mic, I believe we got Mike Uyama up there ready to read your donations. So if you want some hype, yeah. get them in going. We're already past $108,000. Time, time to kick you back up for the Genesis Classic, Streets of Rage. Enjoy, guys.